That was Ian Coiter with Almighty, uh, another song off the scene, original soundtrack, and that just that reminded me of Brian Eno a lot, just that ambient kind yeah, of yeah, it was very ambient, very uh, music, mellowed out. Um, so that's really cool. I don't know the soundtracks introducing me to all these great new Toronto artists. That it's kind of kind of hyping up the movie for me too. I'm, I'm yeah, looking forward I'm, to this I'm screening very next weekend. To see this movie and uh, to talk to Josh. He is the director of the movie The Scene: An Exploration of Music in Toronto, which will be uh, screening here on Queen's University campus next Friday at Ellis Hall. So yeah, basically it's a documentary film project. Hey, Josh. It chronicles the lives of independent musicians as they build their careers in the Canadian music industry. I think we just got a hold of Josh right now. Hello, Josh. Good morning. Hey, how's it going? I'm doing well. How are you guys doing? Not too bad, thanks. Just looking forward to this interview this morning. Yeah, me too. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, uh, very excited for the screening next week here at Queen's. As are we, we're, we're very excited to be returning to our uh, alma mater uh, to premiere the film. It's going to be uh, it's going to be a good time, I think. Yeah, and uh, I think there'll be a good turnout. So, how how's it been going for the film? You were recently at uh, CBGB Fest in New York for a screening. Yeah, that was definitely uh, sort of a, a cherry on top of our uh, a tour that we've been doing. Uh, we did a couple of festivals here um, in Canada, then we did a couple down in the states, and uh, certainly playing. Um, at CBGB, um, which of course, uh, for people that don't know, it, it was sort of the preeminent punk rock bar uh, in New York uh, that, that launched a lot of great bands like the Ramones and Blondie. Hmm. Um, so to play that festival uh, in New York was uh, definitely uh, quite an experience. So it was great to go down there and see it up on the screen. Yeah, for sure. That's that's really cool. Uh, that was just was that a few weeks ago? Yeah, that was just it uh, was uh, you know just mid October. Yeah. yeah. Right on. Yeah, so uh, Josh, you said you uh, Queen's University is your alma mater. Uh, yes. You were you were born in Belleville as well. So, what drew you to the Toronto music scene on like a personal basis? Well, I mean, it wasn't so much uh, the necessarily the Toronto music scene that drew me to Toronto so much as the Toronto film scene. Um, I certainly, uh, yeah, as, as you said, born in Belleville, um, and we our first uh, festival that we played was actually in Belleville, downtown Dock Fest, uh, which plays. Uh, in February and March of every year. Um, went to Kingston, worked for a couple years as an editor in Kingston, but then, of course, you know, with the bright, shining city on the hill, I had to go to Toronto and, and, and <laughs> mm -hmm. take my chances and roll the dice, and I ended up working uh, various jobs, and, and now I'm working in a production studio as an editor, and certainly uh, once you're, you're sort of in that scene and you're working different jobs, you start to realize that everyone you meet seems to be in a band um, <laughs> and my, my co-producer and editor Andrew Smythe uh, called me up one day he had recently done a short doc on uh, on a musician from Ottawa who was making a comeback and he suggested we need we need to make a movie so it just kind of came together organically right on so by the sounds of it you're kind of working in Toronto and then this was more of a like a passion project almost uh, absolutely yeah. and yeah. As, as is often the case uh, when when you're you're struggling to make it as an artist of any sort um, we both have jobs uh, Andrew has a has a corporate gig if you will and I'm working in the studio uh, production studio now um, but this was something that we did uh, purely out of passion and because um, we knew uh, so many of these acts and wanted to get them in a venue that they would otherwise not play in in this case a movie theater and we thought this was kind of a, a unique way to to get them out there and to talk about some of the issues facing uh, artists in Canada today yeah for sure that's really cool hmm. must so, have been fun to make then such a oh, passion yeah. project oh. and it, yeah it was so much fun and, and we, we you know we had this great opportunity to speak with you know the guys from Anvil and Biff Naked and Rick Emmett and these really fantastic musicians with so much experience as well so they could bring their insight to the project as well um, from their very sort of unique perspectives of having made it <laughs> yeah. I, do, I do say unique uh, to to have made it in, in Canadian music so um, it was just a great great time being able to speak with these people about about the issues facing uh, younger artists today mm -hmm. so most the, like the bands you focused on just the, like those were your friends bands 
Well, it was, uh, yeah, so Committed to Rhyme is fronted by a friend of mine. We were both uh, canvassers for an environmental organization, and, and that's where I met him. Um, then the Alter Cockers uh, contacted us uh, through an ad that Andrew had posted on Craigslist, and the Ruby Spirit were referred to us um, by a mutual colleague. So it all kind of came together that way, and of course now we, we're always kind of in contact with them and try to see them as often as we can. Cool. And then how did you go about uh, contacting the other people that you interviewed? It seems like a pretty eclectic crowd. Yeah, it definitely is, is an interesting mix of people. Um, honestly, mostly it was just you know cold calling or cold emailing. We, we just contacted either them directly or their PR people. We told them about the project, and uh, they were just flat out intrigued by it, and they, they were happy to sit down and talk with us. We didn't have any trouble at all reaching out to people and having them sit down with us for you know 20 or 30 minutes uh, it, it was a very um laid back interview approach that we took to it as well which i think they appreciated and, and they always you know followed up by saying you know if you need anything else just get in touch it's yeah. no problem at all so it was great that's cool hmm. all right so uh changing gears a little bit here so you're coming back to queens next weekend for the movie screening is there is there anything here at Queens or in Kingston that inspired you particularly towards developing this passion project? Well, I mean, certainly being a Queens film grad, I have to give props uh, to the department because, um, you know, I spent four years of my life uh, studying film, uh, and it was just a kind of a natural course of events that I would take that with me hmm. to Toronto to, to develop this project. And Andrew was a film minor as well. So really it, it, come to, it came down to um, when I went to Queens, I, I went there to pursue what I loved. And so I stuck with it. And, and I think Queens helped me um, to do that. It kept sort of my, my spirits high. Uh, to actually <laughs> follow through with it as well. So that was that was the, the, the key thing. The one thing we always get complimented on the most is that we finished the project. <laughs> um, and I you know I have to. I, I'd say I'd give props to the Department of Film and Media at Queens for that. Yeah. Right on. How how long did the project take? Uh, it was it was a little over a year. We yeah. Andrew, Andrew and I first spoke about it in January of 2012. We started shooting in April, uh, wrapped in October. Um, and then we had it out, sending it out to festivals, and, and we were playing uh, in Belleville uh, the beginning of March of this year. So it was it was oh. just over just over a year, yeah. Yeah, right on. Uh, so having not seen the film yet, what are some of the frequent strugg uh, struggles that most of these bands encounter and kind of discuss in Toronto? Yeah, so I mean, as you might expect, uh, as with any artistic pursuit, uh, finances are always a struggle. Mm -hmm. um, the problems facing them here is that as much as they might love to do it, uh, they're not making any money, generally speaking, uh, when they're playing live. Uh, usually what happens is they, they send around a collection jar and and hopefully people in the crowd will throw some change into it <laughs> to help them basically buy a round of beer. Yeah. Um, so we wanted to show the 99% of their lives as well that aren't spent on the stage because you see a very small portion of what goes into um, those performances when you go see them live. Um, and really it is about juggling often more than one job. Um, often they live at home. Um, to you know, keep expenses to a minimum. Um, yeah. So really, it comes down to that, and also um, basically, you know, airplay, trying to get noticed, trying to get played. It's very difficult to do, um, you know, especially when there's some major, major Canadian bands are, are you know making it, uh, over, you know, south of the border, which fulfills a lot of CanCon requirements, for example, hmm. and yeah. so it gets tough uh, for for smaller bands to to be heard for for, for DJs to. To break bands on the air anymore it just doesn't happen the same way so those are probably the two primary struggles is just just being heard and, and trying to make money at shows so i always encourage people if you go to see a live show and you see that jar going around please put money in it mm -hmm. these people are, are playing for you and they're putting a lot of blood sweat tears and talent into this show yeah definitely yeah buy some buy merch too, or something yeah. yeah buy some merch yeah, yeah. absolutely <laughs> <laughs> all right so um I'd assume while you were making this movie, you were following these bands around, interviewing them all the time, on the regular. Um, speaking of getting realized and heard across the nation, what can you say about some of these bands' current status and state, like, right now, like, after the movie's been made? 
Well, um, some of them don't exist. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, so so right now, uh, Committed to Rhyme is still playing uh, small venues. There are, I mean, Josh Dennis is the front man of that band. He works usually a couple couple different jobs. He has a lot of long weeks, and so when they can get organized, they, they try to play some of the small venues here. Um, and they did a, a you know a, a, an EP recently that they launched. Um, the Alter Cockers, uh, they have a new singer now, uh, but they're also still in the sort of recording and, and they're playing, they we're playing uh, at the Imperial uh, like every Wednesday in October, and, and then the Ruby Spirit has now um, fractured into a couple different groups. Um, uh, the lead singer uh, Paige uh, is now touring solo, um, as Paige Cora and uh, Alex Pulik, who also did a bit of uh, the music for the soundtrack. He's uh, touring and recording with a, his new band The Nursery and they just launched their first music video actually the other day hmm. yeah. so a lot of different stories there yeah we've been, yeah. We've been sorry we've been playing uh, some of the songs from the soundtrack so far on our show today and they're awesome that was great yeah, yeah it's no, awesome we, music we lucked out and certainly in that regard we got a very talented group of individuals and then um, even just for the, the score itself uh, for example MPSO I think he played uh, one of his tracks earlier mm -hmm. um, that was just pure chance Andrew was about to jump on a streetcar and he heard a busker playing some really fantastic music so he missed his streetcar and went and spoke with the guy and it was a guy named Daniel Gray who moonlights as MPSO and so he sent the soundtrack or his, his tracks his Bandcamp page to me and it just blew my mind it's like this, this was his first time busking and we just happened to bump into him <laughs> wow. at that moment and then get him involved with the film so it's, it's amazing music and, and I wish more people could hear it so I'm glad um, very thankful for you to you guys for for playing them on the air. It's just great. Yeah, that's that's a really cool story. Just how everything comes together and music's always out there in the streets. It's everywhere. Yeah, it's everywhere. If you you don't yeah, if, if you look for it, it's there. It's on the streets. It's any just about any club you pop your head in. There's going to be an an indie artist trying to make it. So yeah, do mm -hmm. pop your head in and like I say, drop some change in that collection jar at the same time. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Um, so what were some of like, the important things that you learned working on this project in terms of a filmmaker? Well, I certainly learned that uh, documentary filmmaking is more forgiving uh, than narrative filmmaking. Yeah. Um, we, uh, as I said, you know, we certainly recognize some of the parallels uh, of being an artist. Uh, when you're making a film uh, in terms of finances and time and all these sorts of things. Like I say, Andrew and I both have full-time jobs, so we're making this film um, on the cheap as best we can. Um, I like to say no tax dollars were harmed in the making of this picture. It, it <laughs> was completely independent. Um, it was free time whenever we could, and, and certainly with the documentary format, um, you can take you know eight months and just book interviews when you can and you know do evenings and weekends and that sort of thing. Um, so it was definitely, it was a, it's a longer process, but it's also something that I, you know, I tell people, you can do it, you, you can go out you can make a film, you can complete it, and you don't have to max out your credit cards. Mm -hmm. Must feel a lot more rewarding with the final product to taking that route. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. It's definitely, a, 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 like you say, a passion project. It was very much something that was very personal to us and very important to us that we did finish it. So now to, you know, we had fairly modest expectations for an indie doc about indie music in Canada. Yeah. Um, so the fact that we've had this opportunity to tour it around a bit and play in New York, and now we've had a distribution deal with actually a Kingston-based uh, distributor called Factory Film Studio, um, who will be handling our North American worldwide VOD, iTunes, and DVD launch uh, in the new year. Um, it was absolutely beyond our expectations. Um, you know, we, we certainly managed our expectations. Like I say, it's indie, very indie all the way, but mm -hmm. we, we've got to play for a week at the, at the Carleton Theatre here in Toronto, um, which was fantastic. So we, we've definitely been able to take this uh, to places we, we, we didn't know were possible. So it's been a great ride. Yeah, that's amazing. So yeah, as, as you just said, in terms of distribution, what, what do you have coming up next? Uh, POV yeah, and so uh, yeah, early in the new year, we don't have exact dates yet, uh, but we're going to be doing a full iTunes, VOD, and DVD release through Factory Film Studio. Um, so hopefully we'll have uh, more information on that soon. Certainly people can check out our website and our Facebook mm -hmm. um, to stay up to date with that sort of thing. But mm -hmm. um, that's, that's the next step. We're, we're sort of through 
um, all of the necessary financial and legal hurdles at this point that they can sort of just say, okay, I think this one is nicely sealed up and put it in the hands of some people that do this for a living, distribute for a living, and, and can make that part of it happen. So yeah. we're excited about that. We're going to be certainly pushing it and, and promoting it as much as we can, and uh, hopefully uh, getting people uh, getting people out to the screen. You might get a few more few more uh, potential customers down the road, if you will. Yeah, uh, sure. So we're, we're you know, obviously looking forward to uh, to coming to Queens and then getting to kind of, especially you know because we have you know the, the film department is involved and you guys are involved, so it's mm-hmm. really very much a, a homecoming uh, of our own making in a way it's, it's a really great experience and I yeah. give props to Derek Redman at the, at the film department for, mm-hmm. uh, for really making it happen yeah did you did you have Derek as a prof uh, I did indeed yeah. I had him for, uh, for a couple of different classes so I'm right um, very familiar uh, and uh, yeah looking forward to, to yeah. catching up with him yeah for sure well thank you very much for joining today and uh, oh, we're pleasure. really looking forward to the screening uh, next week and uh, meeting you back here at Queens Likewise, looking forward to meet you, and thanks so much uh, for, again for having me on. It's been great. Yeah, thanks a lot. Have yeah. a good day, Josh. Thanks a lot, Take Josh. Care, it was our pleasure. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye. That was Josh Jensen, um, producer and director of the scene, an exploration in uh, music in Toronto. And uh, yeah, really nice guy. It was nice talking to him there. Yeah, I can't wait to see this movie. Mhm. Very excited for it. As I said, next Friday. November 22nd at 3 o'clock in Ellis Auditorium. It's free of charge, and uh, come out, bring your friends, everyone's invited, and it's going to be a great time. So here is MPSO with Let Go. Yeah. 